Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on the old show today. You know what? Drunken driving in this country, and not to mention every other country around the world, is kind of at an epidemic type situation. In fact, the amount of fatalities from drunken driving, and especially the fatalities of folks that weren't even involved in the alcohol consumption, as it were, is a situation that probably could be rectified. And the folks over at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration are looking into something just like that. The pair of different opportunities that they're looking at, one of them being a small box that's the head of the steering wheel, that could actually take in the breath of the driver or the operator of the vehicle. Now, because different molecules coming out of the driver's mouth, uh, without being alcohol molecules versus the carbon dioxide molecules, have different densities, the infrared light inside of the box can tell the difference between the two and will be able to detect whether the driver is not capable of driving the machine as it were and will make it inoperable. The second opportunity they may have is because a lot of vehicles have push button starts. It can actually detect the alcohol content in the driver's body right through the finger touch onto that button that it'll make the vehicle not start as well. Apparently the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is going to try to come up with a round number that they think will be the limit, which probably would be .08, and then they will work from there as far as making these vehicles inoperable. Now, that being said, this is kind of a slippery slope. Many people may look at this and say, you know what, this is an invasion of privacy. And there is that situation too as far as the push button thing that someone else inside the vehicle that may not be as intoxicated as the driver himself could get the vehicle in operation. May have to put somewhat of a combination situation together between these two outfits. So, But me, as far as my views on this deal, the more drunk drivers you can get off of public highways, the better. So this would be something that could nip it in the bud before a drunk driver can even get out on the highways with a very, very heavy projectile that could take out anybody in its path. Next up on the list, well, it's been a long time since we talked about the folks over at Top Gear. In an interesting situation over the past several days, apparently there may be a situation that gets the band back together, as it were as apparently Richard Hammond and James May have both gotten an offer from the BBC. It's 4.6 million pounds sterling or 7.1 million US dollars. They have been offered this to continue on with the Top Gear franchise. Now I know right off the bat this sounds a little bit terrible, but there's a little method to the madness for what the BBC may have in mind. And their idea is this that they're going to bring in a celebrity guest to be the third presenter inside of the franchise for every episode for at least the next, we're thinking maybe at least a couple of seasons of the Top Gear franchise. And this will actually kind of make somewhat of a transition that we may be able to make a big transition at the end of those couple three seasons, which is Jeremy Clarkson's return to the franchise now, this is an interesting situation. Number one, if you bring in a celebrity presenter, isn't it going to be kind of tricky if you're going to do these long road trips? Are they going to be available to actually do these? It would sometimes take months to actually film and produce, so that's going to be an interesting situation. Number two, James May has been pretty vocal about not working if Mr. Clarkson's not involved, so this could be a situation as well. And... How good are the shows going to be without J Jeremy Clarkson at the helm? That being said, I would still watch him anyway. So the funniest thing, at least to me in this situation, is is if Hammond and May take this offer, that is, they will become the highest paid people inside of the BBC and would have put them right on par with what Jeremy Clarkson was making in the beginning. So this is an awful juicy set of situations to see if this could actually happen. As much as I wanted to see an all-new program over on Netflix or ITV, to get the band back together and have Top Gear the way it was, remember with the cool wall and the celebrity and the reason we buy car, the news segment and the Stig, I think would be a pretty doggone good deal as well. So we'll wait and see what comes of this in the future. And last up on the list, 
Folks over at Toyota have actually gone over to the trademark office and trademarked a brand new name. And no, it's not the Supra. It is SFR. And a lot of people are pointing towards that this may be the FT1's concept, the new name for this machine, if they actually do the, build this particular concept machine. It may be a lot different than what this machine was. That being said, I don't really care for this alphanumeric style of naming things. Even though SFR is having a nice little ring to it, I would still rather, much rather have it be the super name attached to this machine when it comes out. But again, we'll have to wait and see. This has got a lot of traction and it will be interesting to see what exactly comes about this in the next several months. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. If you want to jump on over to the Facebook page, the link's down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.